Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make my clay cabs. What you'll need is an acrylic or a glass base as well as some parchment paper and then you'll need some cutters, some clay. An optional item that's really helpful is a clay roller or a pasta roller. I got mine on Amazon for like $40, but this is optional. You can also just use a clay rolling pin, which I have right here. And then you'll also probably want some little tools. I got most of this stuff from Michael's, except for my cutters. Take a chunk of clay and start to roll it out. I'm gonna roll it out with my roller a little bit before I put it through the pasta maker. You can also roll it entirely with the roller. What I like about the pasta maker is that every time your clay comes out, the same thickness every time. This opal clay has a lot of flakes in it, so I'm just smoothing it out before I use my cutters. Then I'm going to go ahead, if you have a stamp, stamp first and then cut. This will be the easiest to get the pattern lined up properly. Once you cut, you can lift your clay and then use your tools to help you lift up your clay pieces and put them on your parchment for baking. When working with small or complicated cutters that have a lot of angles, I recommend using cornstarch and then you dip your cutters in the cornstarch before you cut. This is going to help it not stick and you're going to get a better result overall. Then go ahead and cut as normal. I recommend re-cornstarching every cut or every couple cuts depending on how complicated your cutter is. These little circles probably only need it once in a while. Once you turn your clay into Swiss cheese, you can squish it all back together, fold it up a couple times, and then roll it out flat again, just like when you're baking cookies. I like to call these little clay creations my forbidden cookies, because they look like beautiful little sugar cookies, but unfortunately you should not eat them. They are polymer, they are oil-based. Do not eat these. <laughs> Now I'm gonna show you some marbling techniques. So here's an example of some marbled clay from before. I'm gonna show you how I create that effect and we're gonna recreate it. So first I'm taking my clay and I'm rolling it out into little snakes. This clay here was a little bit funky and separated so I just pulled it apart and now we've got three little tiny snakes. Now I'm gonna take the orange and roll out some larger ones as well as my packaged clay over on the right there. Try to roll out the snakes kind of long, like eight or nine inches. Grabbing some yellow, I'm just gonna grab a small chunk off the top here. You can see it's already sectioned into quarters. I'm gonna grab like roughly an eighth or a tenth. Uh, I'm just gonna pull a little chunk off and again, we're gonna roll it into a snake. Once we've gotten all of our snakes rolled out, we're gonna push them together into what I like to call a super snake. <laughs> And then I'm going to add a little bit more burgundy for a little bit more darkness to it and just wrap it all around. Now we can start twisting our snakes into a candy cane. As you see, I'm just holding, twisting with one hand, holding with the other. Then I'm going to fold, squish, and roll it out some more, turning our snake into a marble snake. You can see that marble starting to come together. Just keep rolling and twisting until you're happy with the result. Then I'm going to roll it up into kind of like a little croissant and then flatten it out nicely. I'm also gonna add some gold leaf to this. So here's the gold leaf. I recommend keep it in the package and just use your finger to pull a tiny bit out at a time. It will stick to your fingers. So just use them to help you pull. You don't need to pinch it between your fingers or anything. And then I'm just gonna place it on there and now I can roll it through the pasta roller again. And we're gonna see our results. Ta-da! Here is our first marble. I really like how it looks. Now we can cut out and keep on marbling. Again, once you've turned it into Swiss cheese, feel free to fold it back up together. And you can always add more gold leaf as you go if you need to. And then roll it out nice and flat. Once you're done, use a paper towel to clean up any of the clay that's left over on your workspace. Here's the result of our marble. As you can see, these bottom row here are our first cut and these top row are the next couple cuts. And you'll see how the marble slowly starts to incorporate and blend and how it changes over time. Here is another marbling technique that's a little bit different, but it's gonna yield a beautiful result as well. First, take all your clay and chop it up into little pieces. I'm using a little razor that I got from Michael's. Be very careful as it is very sharp.
Once all your pieces are cut, you're going to take them together and start blending them and mixing them so all the colors are evenly distributed and make sure to pull apart any clumps. Then we're going to squish it all together and using my roller, I'm going to be pressing it into a little log like so. And then we're going to cut all these little kind of uh, tiles and then we're going to place them together to create into a slab like so. And then we can roll it out a little bit with the roller and then I will put it through the pasta maker. And I'm going to add a little more gold leaf because I love it so much. So you'll see this marble turns out a little more different. It's instead of being swirly, it's going to have more of a like stained glass kind of look to it. And our next technique is how to make something that kind of looks like turquoise or how light. So we're going to take our little pieces of clay and chop them up like we did before. But I'm just going to use all turquoise for this. And then what we're going to be using is some acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to apply this with a paintbrush. Uh, eventually it was too slow and I just started using my hands. Note this is going to be very, very messy. As you see, the paint will spread a little bit. That's no problem. It's not going to get in the way. Keep adding until it is adequately kind of blackened around all of the pieces so they're evenly coated. And then again, we're going to squish them into a little log and then chop them up into tiles and create a new slab. Basically the same technique as our last marble, but instead this time we use the paint to create some separation between our pieces like so, creating the kind of effect that marble or how light has. And here's what they look like. They turned out really beautiful. Okay, now check the instructions on your clay. Mine says 275, so I'm just going to lower the temperature and preheat my oven. Then I can put my pieces right from the parchment onto a baking tray and into the oven. Bake them for about 10 minutes, follow the instructions, and then you can take them out. I like to put mine just right on the counter on their parchment paper to cool. This way they are going to cool nice and quickly. Just like that. So here now I can show you everything that I made for this video. We made so many pairs. I love how they all turned out. I'm super happy with them. One last tip is to use a nail file or sandpaper to sand the edges with these opal ones. Like I said, they've got those big flakes, so I had to remove them. Some of your other pieces might have a little bit of a rough edge too, and you can sand them down to perfect them and make them look very, very beautiful. An optional step is you could also take UV resin and put it on top or maybe a Mod Podge to make it shiny and to finish it, but I tend to skip that step. And boom, here's a pair of finished earrings using the clay we just made, as well as a few more examples of some pieces I've done. I really hope you loved this video. If you liked it, subscribe for more. Please give this a big thumbs up and I'll see you at the next one. Have a beautiful day.